a male in his 40s, has a chest x-ray after presenting to his GP with fatigue. Now this is a really difficult x-ray, which was called normal at the time, but there is a really subtle abnormality. If you think you know what it is, keep watching and we'll go through the case. This is another chest x-ray where it's really important to assess the hyla regions in detail. Have a look at this normal case. In a normal case you should be able to see tapering vessels arising from the hilum and getting smaller. These represent normal pulmonary arteries and veins which arise in the mediastinum and branch out into the lungs. In our case, the right hilum isn't quite right. Now this is very subtle, but there is a fullness to the right hilum separate to the vessels which implies there could be abnormal soft tissue here. On the left, things are even more subtle. We have some end-on vessels here, these circular structures. These are okay. However, again, we have a fullness to the hilum we just can't explain. With apparent soft tissue at the right hilum, we need to think about a primary lung cancer, as well as anything that can cause lymph node enlargement at the hilum. Here, we need to include anything that can cause bilateral hilar node enlargement, namely sarcoidosis, lymphoma, and TB. Given ongoing symptoms, the patient went on to have a CT scan. Here we can see on this coronal view, the fullness at the hilum can be accounted for by lymph node enlargement. Now we can also see enlarged nodes within the mediastinum and also the left hilum. See how this correlates with what we see on the chest x-ray. With fairly symmetrical lymph node enlargement on the CT, we need to think about a diagnosis of sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a multi-system disease commonly affecting the lungs characterized by formation of non-caseating granulomas. These can resolve spontaneously, but can also lead to lung fibrosis. Now the classic line is that sarcoid can present as anything, but actually there are a few specific things on chest imaging that can give you a clue as to whether a patient has sarcoid. Like we have here, fairly symmetrical bilateral hyla nodes, as well as mediastinal lymph node enlargements can lead you to a diagnosis. Main differentials for this are TB and lymphoma, However, you may see a slightly more asymmetric appearance. Lymphoma can give you a more diffuse pattern of node enlargement, while TB classically affects the right hilum. The nodes in sarcoid can sometimes appear higher in density due to calcification. This can give different patterns such as punctate or eggshell calcification. Something I see fairly regularly are nodes which have a hazy high density, which always makes me think of sarcoid. Nodes aren't always limited to the chest, but can also extend to the neck, and also the abdomen, making differentiation from lymphoma sometimes quite difficult. Now there are some classic lung parenchymal findings given the distribution of granulomas. Micronodularity in a perilymphatic distribution is classic, affecting the peribronchovascular interstitium, pleural surfaces, fissures, and interlobular septa. You can get larger lung nodules, which classically in sarcoid are ill-defined or shaggy. Larger nodules can have smaller nodules surrounding them, the so-called galaxy sign. There can be areas of consolidation and ground glass opacity, and it's worth noting there is a variant of sarcoid that presents with multifocal consolidation known as alveolar sarcoid. This can be quite tricky to differentiate from other causes of multifocal consolidation. Small airway involvement can give you a mosaic attenuation pattern on CT, and with progressive disease, you can get lung fibrosis, retraction bronchiectasis, and architectural distortion, which usually has an upper lobe predominance. Going back to our scan, if we now look at the lung parenchyma, we'll see that we've got micronodularity following the fissures, the bronchovascular bundles, and also the interlobular septi. We also have larger, ill-defined nodules as well. This is all highly suggestive of sarcoidosis. Most centres will want a tissue diagnosis to be definitive, and here the least invasive method was an ultrasound-guided biopsy of a right axillary node, which confirmed the diagnosis. The hyalur regions are notoriously difficult to assess, and this x-ray is no exception. Even experienced radiologists can slip up when looking at the hyalur regions. My advice really is to take your time over this area. If you do have previous films to compare to, this can always help. But look out for anything you can't explain away with branching tapering vessels.